Yep. And here we go. Let me just crop it. Hey, Mono! Can you guys hear this? Are you guys hearing this amazing music though in the uh, in the intro oh my goodness isn't it amazing hey Matt and look at the signature at the bottom right I did it to four, but okay. I'll, I'll double check. The pod, considered to be nothing more than another piece of scrap, was taken aboard a robot command garbage freighter. Unfortunately, these robots have no regard for organics. Yeah, I cropped it up to five for the left, right, and bottom. There we go. Okay. The small pod is jarred by a sudden shock, which triggers the sleep chamber's revive mode. As the glass shroud slides back, Roger slowly begins to regain consciousness. Alright, it's all at six. Listen closely. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, well, it can wait just a couple seconds, Mono. I, I just want to not miss this part. You notice that the sounds from the pod grow softer until they are imperceptible. Having served its purpose and taxed its resources, the pod gives a final hum and shuts down. Here's a Mickey Mouse hand, and there you go. This is Space Quest 3, and I will do the cropping, um, and so, so that uh, Mono's happy. Alright, I'm bringing this up to 8, Mono. All right, is that good? Yo, Mono. Okay, good. All right. I did. I always fit the screen now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm so excited. This is like one of my favorite games. Okay. Here we go, people. Okay, look. You are standing in a debris cluttered junk bin. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, an escape pod rests in, rests in the middle of the room. There are chunks of metal lying around which seem to be small sections of old spaceware. 
And I have to say, doesn't this look so much better than the first two games? And what a difference one year makes. Because a year later, and now we're listening to amazing sound from Roland MT32. Regular GOG would have had us listening to some really tinny sound blaster crap, but I took care of that. So anyway... What is this thing? Oh, whoops. Look round. The floor is composed of a mosaic of overlapping welded steel plates. The menage of used steel plates appear to have been cut from a variety of sources. There's a small round object lying nearby. So apparently we got picked up by some robots that are basically just trash men who are very non-friendly to organics. Okay, so look round object. A closer look at the object on the floor reveals that it's a warp motivator. It looks a bit more high-tech than the other junk we're strewn about this locale. Sturdily constructed, its only protrusion is a modular plug near its base. Yeah, and it it's it's only like a year later, just like uh, Space Quest 2 was one year later, and yet look at the resolution difference and the sound difference. It's, it's oh my goodness, it's just oh gorgeous. Chef's kisses all around. All right, let's see. Okay, so uh, let's. Oh, let's look at the uh, let's skeleton at the foreground. Looks to be another metallic menace whose time has come and gone. Hopefully, fate will be kinder to you. All right. Oh, wait. Before I go up there... I think I want to go... Oh, yeah, from, from 3 to 4? Oh, don't get me started. Well, look at this. We got some Star Wars and some Star Trek references later. But right now, Star Wars. Let's look at this... Um, Look, ship. This bulbous craft looks like it has seen a lot of action in its day. You believe it to be a bow tie fighter dating back to the Cologne Wars. A true relic. <laughs> the Cologne Wars. Oh, so. so sassy. Oh, and look at that shadow and then no shadow yeah look ship the ship is another fine worthless acme product and my mouse seems to be going nuts okay there we go um let me save here under description space quest all right. Oh, okay. So now, in the spirit of True Space Quest, I got to show you this death right here. Um, get uh, metal. Yow! Spurt, spurt, spurt. It's obvious that the metal was sharper than you. The resulting, the resulting laceration turns you into a living fountain, at least for a few moments. Unfortunately for you, this show was your finale. Good luck in the afterlife. A brave but fatal attempt at arterial art. One way to lower your blood pressure.
Oh yeah. That was uh, a little gory. And here's the Jupiter One. Um, for those of you who are fans of whatever, this ship says Jupiter Two. This baby must have been floating around here for a long time. It doesn't hold your interest for very long. Yeah. Um, the two guys were not fans of, uh, this series, Lost in Space. Neither was I. Um, I don't know. It looked too campy. Up. Oh, well. The music stopped. Oh, by the way, the music was, uh, created by this guy named Bob Siebenberg, who was a, a drummer for the band Supertramp. Um, which was a uh, prog rock band uh, in the 70s and 80s. Okay, look arm. Somewhere there's an oversized android missing a limb. All right, that's good to know. Um, let's look. Um, you're overwhelmed by the variety of space trash around each corner. A large bucket conveyor carries shredded ships to a horizontal conveyor high above. Alright, well, before we get up there, I'm thinking... Yeah, yeah, Super Tramp, right? Alright, here we go. Oh, oh, that, that, that's, this is not good. Roger doesn't like this. Uh-oh. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going on to a conveyor belt. Oh, he doesn't look too happy about it. Oh, I see why. Okay, oh, oh no, what's going on? Oh, not a pretty sight. Shredded like it on a ran contra document. Oh, 80s references. You're many independent parts. Okay, that went fast. You're a less than choice cut, Wilco. All right. Well, that went fast. That was a very fast moving uh, message. But now we know better. And what's good about this game, too is that it um it stops when you type so it gives you plenty of time so what we're gonna do they're gonna plop us come on plop plop me all right all right up oh, stand jump there we go look at that 15 whole points so mono your fear is about um, uh, 738 points um, do not worry we get lots and lots of points in this game So off we go into the wild blue yonder. And this game is very spacey. And uh, for anyone who needs to go, stay until the Space McDonald's. Please, I beg you. It's even got an arcade machine. All right. So, um, here, let's see, get in grabber. I think that's a grabber. And it works very much, yeah, plopping into the seat, you grasp the forward backward control of the grabber. Okay. So, um, look, robot. It's a model you've not seen before. This droid appears to be dedicated to this workstation. It seems harmless enough. These screens are just so gorgeous. The way it's the same amount of uh, colors as Space Quest 1 and 2. But because of the dithering, um, it looks like... 
Oh no! You really beat the beam, Buckwheat. There's that lack of or regard for organics in action again. I guess they never heard of the warning shot concept around here. Anyway, you're dead. Yeah, this guy can get you. I totally forgot that. Hold on. Hope you enjoy your new flow through ventilation system. Yep. Well, you're going to see, uh, you are going to see another McDonald's. Space Quest McDonald's, and it is called Monolith Burger. Because the two guys from Andromeda are crazy about that friggin' movie. Alright. So, let's get in the grabber and get out of here. And we'll look at the grabber um, on another screen. Okay. Look grabber. From the seat, you see a handle presently being gripped by you, which controls motion and a button marked claw. Okay. So you remember that, uh, that th module that we ha saw in... Um, in the ship, in the, in the screen where our ship landed, in uh, that, that huge thing. Well, uh, this particular machine, I'm going to just, okay, press claw. This thing goes down. And uh, searches for something to pick up. And uh, brings back up. Now, uh, I happen to know that I have to... Oh, and the sound effects, too. MT32 sound effects. Let's see if I can't um, speed it up a little bit. Yeah, faster. Faster. There we go. All right. Um... Here we go. We're backing up, being real speedy around this robot guy. Okay, I think around here, let's see, press claw. Up, oh, almost. That should do it. Yeah. The claw senses contact with the more woke motivator and grasps it firmly and begins the ascent back to the grabber. Oh, what a satisfying clunk. All right, here we go. I like the little beep. So cool. Oh, this game. I love it. Even the ambient sound. Sorry, I'll stop gushing. All right. Oh, wait. Let's see. Um, okay. Let's try, uh, let's try this. Let's press claw here. Let's see where we are. Oh! Look at that! There's a ship there, and there's a hole on top of it. No! No, no, I didn't want to drop it there. Silly ship. I wanted to drop it in that ship. And this is um, the Space Quest community's favorite ship of all time. 
Um, I'm not going to ruin it. No, I'll ruin it for you. The ship is called the Aluminum Mallard. Get it? Um, as opposed to uh, Millennium Falcon, Aluminum Mallard. Yeah. Just uh, just wanted to make sure no one uh, didn't go over anyone's head because it went over my head when I was younger. We're already at 45 points. Alright. Get out of grabber. And let's walk out. Oh! Well, good. We're fine. Fortunately, you come to relatively soft landing in a pile of debris. Oh! Oh, wait, wait, whoa. Oh, okay, look. You seem to be in a debris-enclosed hollow. Poking out of the ceiling is the chute, which you originally entered through. Some crusty lamps linked by an, a non-UL-approved wire provide additional illumination. Let's look at the rats, which I think are rats. You can hear something scurrying around above you. You can't actually see the rats because they're hidden in the shadows. Okay, get wire. That won't help you now. Yes, it will. Get wire. Give me that wire. Oh, wait. Okay, there's a generator here. Turn off generator. What? Look. Look, generator. Look, power. Look, wire. Some brittle looking wire runs from lamp to lamp and then disappears to hole left. Okay, look, hole. Ah, reactor. Okay, get reactor. Tour. You unhook the reactor from the cheap wires and take it with you. Okay, and get wires. Uh, get wire. Okay, well, let's look at our inventory. We got a gem. Oh, from the first game, our gem. This is an auxiliary reactor. We will need that. And uh, we will need our gem. Let's look at it. You are still carrying the piece of Orium you picked up on Labion during your last adventure. However, it has since lost its glow. Man, what a bummer. Hey, rats. Sorry. I need this more than you do. So just find another place to party. Alright. See y'all later. Bending aside a thin piece of scrap, you find an opening into another area and climb on in. And let's get that ladder. Actually, not yet. Not yet. You'll see why. Okay. Do to do. Um, and now we are fine. We're moving in the right direction. Let's uh, do another save. A new save. And we'll call this one Rats. All right. Man, so much trash. And we're out in space. Um, is this the right way? Oh, no, we have to go uh, the north way. Okay. So we have to go around all these ships. 
Oh, by the way, in the uh, pre-release version, um, the two guys from Andromeda, according to the Space Quest historian, uh, he said that on this ship, uh, the two guys from Andromeda wrote, The Empire Sucks. Um, but Ken Williams had them take that one out. Okay, so... Alright. Let's get it. Oh, oh no! Oh no! You seem to have been mugged by some kind of large rat! As you pick loose fur from your teeth, you notice a less bulky feeling. Oh no. Okay, let's see what we lost. Okay, we got a glowing gem. They they took what was theirs and they pieced. All right, well now let's get this wire. I'm feeling that that's gonna be pretty important. Um, but we need our stuff back. So you know what? Um, we're gonna get it. How do we get it? We get it by. Can we climb through? Uh, use ladder. Oh, we might have to just use the grabber. I don't know. I don't want to look for that thing all day. Plus, it's fun using that thing. You know, like his little face there. Alright. Stand and jump. Alright. There's some really good deaths in this game, but, uh... I really would like to get to the point where we are in space. Get in grabber. Okay, exit grabber. All right. All right. Oh, well, look at that. It's all light in here again. I wonder how that happened. They're watching me again. Why are they watching me again? Don't watch me. Get a reactor. Is this guy going to get me again? Yes, uh, they usually don't come back the second time. This is weird. Okay, climb ladder. Alright. Um, I'm going to save on Space Quest. I'm not going to save on rats because get ladder. Grab the ladder and jam it in your pocket. Ouch. Okay. Hopefully the rat does not come this time. But that's not guaranteed because I saw rats coming in. Oh, yeah. Let us go. All right. Good. Oh, there we go. Time to rejoice. And look at that. Transformers. 
Wow, an ancient model of a battle bot. I bet you'd hate to run into whatever brought this big guy down. It looks like something poked it in the eye. Okay, well. Um, something poked it in the eye. Let's get in the eye. Go through eye. Yeah, there we go. Oh look, a giant ticker toy. I remember those. Anybody remember Tinker Toys? Or am I like super old? Look, Tinker Toy. They look like remnants of an orbital space station, or perhaps some type of toys for an oversized child. And of course, we have the uh, obligatory. Um, 2001 vehicle because that is their favorite movie. It's a cute little thing. You've never seen anything like it in these parts, but then where are these parts? Some writing on an exterior reads, for a good time, don't call Hal. Um, I do have to say, that um, the Space Quest community has had a real big time trying to figure out when in the heck Space Quest is now because it seems like a lot of time has passed. Um, and uh, apparently from discussions with the two guys from Andromeda, um, Roger Wilco has become a bit of a uh, an anomaly of sorts that is being taught in, in universities now. Um, oh yeah, I'm I'm sure that would have been an awesome experience, Wayun. All right, so believe it or not. Um, it's really slippery on this ship, and if you were to fall off of it, you would die. It's ridiculous. But anyway, use ladder. Okay, climb ladder. Yes, look up here, be careful. Okay, get ladder. I don't need it up here? Oh, okay. Um, get in ship. I mean, it doesn't seem to be available. We warned you to be careful, but did you listen? No. Good luck next time. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Really? Okay. Well, as you can see, um, you can die by falling about three or four feet. So anyway, use ladder. Okay, climb ladder. Um, get ladder. Oh wait, I, I don't need that. Okay. Um, I'm going to save up here. And now I'm gonna, oh no, I'm gonna, no, come on, okay, um, I think I'm supposed to get in the ship somehow, but, uh, enter, enter ship. You move and put. Okay, there we go. Okay. Lame is death in the game for sure. You move into position and grabbing the dulce finish of the hatch's handle, commence to open and enter the ship. 100 points already. 
we have entered into the uh, fans' favorite ship of all time for Roger Wilco. The Aluminum Mallard. All right. Well, let's uh, use reactor. You drop the reactor into the hole. In attempting to reconnect the cables, you find that one is much too short. Okay. Oh, that's weird, Mono. Carefully re reconnect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back in place once you've finished. All right, and so that's in place. Let's look in seat. Two compassenger seats look quite comfortable. However, the pilot seat is where you'd rather plop your butt. Search seat. Oh, okay. Um, wait, look. At first, you're surprised at how intact the ship's interior is. Immediately to your right is a panel with a red button. At midship, on the right wall, is the ship's main diagnostic computer. Directly across are two passenger seats. Ahead of you is the cockpit. All right. So, um, let's press button. Tall. Oh, okay, that that is okay. That's the exit button. Get in ship. Enter ship. All right. Uh, look panel. Look screen. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. Uh, Let's see if it's ready to go. Auxiliary reactor. Okay, that looks nominal. Landing gear. Nominal. Warp motivator. Nominal. We put that in there. Looks like this bird's in good shape. Great. All right, let's uh, get in seat. Alright, let's search seat. Searching around the cushions you find among variously colored wads of lint, seven buckazoids. So we got seven coins just searching through the seat. Imagine that. Okay. So, um, let's look. You're sitting in the pilot's seat in this sporty little ship. In front of you is the control panel, which is a, contains a computer screen. Uh, look panel. The computer panel contains a computer screen. All ship systems are accessed through the pilot's computer. Okay. Look computer. Oh, yeah. Okay, this. All right, this is uh, this is cool. All right, so first, we need to make sure that we have our shield up because um, let me see. Whoa, full thrust necessary to perform maneuvering. Okay, engines. All right, so um, take off. Okay. You feel a strong rumbling as the ship strains to loosen itself from the confines of the junk heap accumulated at its base. Finally, it begins to rise. The ship rises success. Uh oh. But collides at the top of the freighter. The resulting explosion sets a potpourri of flesh and metal fragments careening in all directions. Oh, that's a different death than I'm used to. Yeah, I should have used the radar. Okay. 
All right. Use computer. All right, and let's do radar. Radar is now in operation. Engines. Take off. All right. The ship rises several meters and then stops abruptly. An alarm from the computer attracts your attention. Ascent halted due to obstruction. Okay, so now um, we need to get ourselves out of this ship so we can get into space. But um, my initial instincts are just to blast my way out. However, I'm thinking that the blowback might be pretty dangerous. So what I'm going to try to do is this. Shields front. Okay. And, uh, fire. The shot blasts a new orifice in the side of the junk freighter. The pressure generated by the desire of the ship's atmosphere to escape to the considerably lower pressure of space causes your ship to spit out like a watermelon seed. And we're in space! Oh my goodness, already in space. In 145 points. In the Space Quest 2, we had 250. Well, 255 if we had the cheat code. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's there are a lot more points in this game. So uh, there's some really cool music ahead. Uh, watch this. Um, wait, look. Computer. Okay, so. Um, I guess now we do navigation system. Yeah. Okay, let's scan. Okay, this is the first one. Planet Ortega, Sector 82, Habitants Unknown, Volcanic Crater Strewn Surface. Okay, but that's fine, but let's, uh, let's look for other ones. Planet Fleabutt, Light Atmosphere, One Known Settlement. I think that's probably where you want to go. But let's uh, let's check it out. Let's check out everything. Oh my God, we got a monolith burger, fast food dive, a finite number served. So that's gonna be the second place we go. But I think the first place is gonna be Fleabot. So let's set a course for Fleabot. Course locked. All right, now let's do. Uh, we could cruise and wait forever, but let's do light speed. Ooh, intrigue. Oh no! What's this? Identity confirmed. Roger Wilco. Case something something. Wilco wanted for vehicle machine fraud. Judgment terminate. Oh no. A flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. Okay, well, um, here's the thing. Again, like I mentioned um, last episode, last week, there's a tremendous snafu here. Um, that was a free 
uh, as you saw from last episode, I made a big deal to show you on the item. It says it's a free whistle. Um, but in creating this game, they wanted a robot to uh, chase this guy for some reason. And uh, they said, well, didn't we use that form? Wasn't that something? And, and they just used that idea. And the writers gave it the okay. So, that's that. Alright, so, um, radar. Leave radar system on a long flight. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Um, let's land. Look at that, all oh, that sound. With a mighty whump, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of flea butt. All right. Get up. And press button. As you step out of your ship onto the windy, windy surface of flea butt, you are hit in the face by the harsh winds. It looks like a storm is brewing. Meanwhile, another spacecraft touches down and clears the text. Uh, what's he doing? Oh, he's got a belt. Oh, he's invisible. Oh, that saves on a lot of animation. Yeah, that's... That saves on a lot of animation. <laughs> okay. Yep, um, I'm guessing so. He's got the, the gap tooth. Oh, look at that gorgeous background, the lightning bolt, and the sound effects. Your ship is resting on the sandy spot between several large rocks. It looks like your automated landing system has done a remarkable job. The atmosphere here, especially with the sound, I think now it really does a lot to uh, to help things. And this place is not as friendly as you might think. There's a lot of like really weird life here that does not like you. Um, like this guy right here. That's a mighty big snake. Oh. Oops. Did I mention uh, I enabled digital sound effects? Thanks for playing Space Quest 3. As usual, you've been a real hoot. Congratulations on your recent death. Snake Chow. All right, but anyway. Oh no, a venomous scorpizoid, watch out. The scorpizoid stinger hits its mark, sending electroplasmatic venom into your system. Death comes quickly. Okay, well again, I've been real hoot. And actually, the uh, the scorpizoid walks faster than you. All right, let's uh, let's see what we can see. What in the world? You're startled by the sight of a giant beast just beyond the sand dune to the north. 
What the heck? Your fear turns to curiosity as you realize it is not a real beast, but a mechanical creation. Although it still looks dangerous, you can't decide whether to blast off this rock or inspect further the wonders of Fleabot. Let's check it out. Uh, this is one of my favorite guys. Uh, Fester Blatz. Of course. Fester Blatz. Fester Blatz. Alright. Well, before we go see Fester, let's see his little thing right here. Aha! A tourist trap. A giant metal facsimile of a space beast is nothing more than a cheap marketing ploy designed to suck in any moron dumb enough to fall for such trickery. You suddenly feel like a dumb moron. You peer through the glass of the display case and find a cute and cuddly little creature. A small sign on the glass informs you that this is an interior slime devil. How cute! Oh yeah, yeah, he shows up um, on Space Quest 6. A little worse for wear in that game though. Alright, lift case lift or no open display case oh no they may be cute but only an idiot would get near one looks like you won't be around to appreciate the other diverse wonders of this garden spot of the universe So, now, uh, one thing I do have to say is that um, we are approaching a spot where we might have to fend off that Terminator guy. There are two ways to do so, and I will do both ways. Um, and I will show you, it's, it's really not that hard. But a lot of people think it is. It's, it's, I mean, if you don't know what to do, it's kind of difficult. Anyway, howdy, stranger. The name's Blatz. Fester Blatz. Welcome to the World of Wonders. Go ahead, have a look at some of the trendiest items in the known universe. Make use of... Make the most of your vacation buckazoid. Alright. Well, um, we don't have very many buckazoids. We have like seven... But if we see below the counter there, um, he likes gems. And we happen to have a gem. So let's, uh, let's show him the gem. Ooh! <laughs> my, my, that's one certainly fine, one, one fine hunk of Orium. Haggle interface. I love that. I'll take it off your hands for 350 bucks always. What do you say? Well, we never go for the first offer. I'll take it off your hands for 400 bucks always. What do you say? No. I'll take it off your hands for 425 bucks always. What do you say? All right. Sure. All right, so um, now let's look around. So let's uh, let's check these postcards. Look card. 
Arrakis! You examine one of the many interesting postcards. Arrakis, a great spot for winter travel. Arrakis holds many delights for the adventurous vacationer. Nothing can compare with a blinding dust storm or being crushed by a sandworm. Okay. You examine one of the many interesting postcards. Black Hole Bertha. This is a dig at Roberta Williams. Like a giant interstellar vacuum, Black Hole Bertha comes sweeping through the galaxy. All travelers are advised to stay away from Bertha just by the postcard and tell everyone you went there. All right. Well, look at this. You examine one of the many interesting postcards. And this is one of the places we can visit. The volcanoes of Ortega are constantly reshaping its surface. Dressed in heat-resistant underwear, the hardy traveler can find a lava lover's paradise on the starkly enjoyable planet. That's a hint. Okay. Let's look at cards. Roberta Land. Oh my. What's this? Come join the fun at the fun park of the future. See characters from favorite stories come to life again and again. Recently revised, so don't go miss a single thrilling scene. All right. Uh, you examine one of the many interesting postcards. Beta Alpha Starless region. Looking for some real solitude? Come for a place that's so far from everything that you can't even see stars. Mind-numbing boredom greets you as you drift aimlessly through nothing. A must for the brain dead. I haven't seen that one. Oh my god, I haven't seen this one either. Um. Oh, wow. Archeron. The friendly creatures of Archeron are a delight for young and old alike. Tame enough to come right up and caress you, yet wild enough to slash you to shreds if provoked. Wow. Okay, I've, we've seen this. Are they looping now? Yeah, they're looping now. One more time. Yeah, they're looping. Okay, great. Alright, so we can buy three things. Um, and, uh, like, we can buy the hat, we, basically everything that he's selling us right now, he's he showing us. Um, let's buy the underwear. Okay. Buy underwear. Alright, and now, uh, we're gonna buy the hat. And the only, uh, place to be able to use this hat is inside this shop. We cannot put it on any other place. So we're gonna wear the hat. You don the jaunty hat. You feel more sporty already. It is an Astro Chicken hat. Astro Chicken is made by Scumsoft, which is the uh, scummy video game software company of this uh, universe and uh, what's the last thing that uh, you got there for us alien guy investor um let's see ah yes the orat on a stick by orat all right so now that we got everything sorry not now okay I will go away. So thank you for stopping by. Hey, it looks like that lightning is getting close. Better be careful out there. Oh no, my hat! So, this is Roger Wilco, the man I've been sent across the universe to track down and terminate. I'm not impressed. You are too easy to find. You tend to leave a mess wherever you go. Seems you forgot to pay for that Labonian Terra Beast mini call whistle. Now let's see, with interest that comes to 400,000 buckazoids, 
I don't think you've got that kind of cash. Hmm, no, I don't think so. So that makes me think it's been a long time. The good people at Chippezoid Novelty Company are most displeased. Non-payment is a serious offense, even though the whistle was free. But lucky for you, I'm in a good mood today. I will count to the Route 10 real slow, then track you down. If you make it to your ship, I'll forget I see you. But again, if I see you, I dust you like bunt cake. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, he, and believe me, he means it. Okay, alright. Um, oh boy. Let's get ready to move. Alright, let's move. So, there's uh, two ways to get him. Uh, this is one way. Um, uh, press button. This is the rarer way to do it. People often do it another way. But this is a much easier way. We use the dinosaur contraption. Uh-oh, it's going down. I see you, Wilco. Yeah, well, I see you too. Uh-oh. Uh, push, pulley, okay, all right, you ready for this, bro? Reaching up, you give the rope a mighty shove. No, oh, no, please, go, go away, oh, no. Yep. Yeah, I got pretzel. Alright. That's embarrassing. Definitely got pretzel. Um, store game. Okay, Fester Blatz. Alright. I'll get him this time. See you, Wilco. All right. Yeah, push, pulley. It's not quite within reach. Oh my. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I, uh... Underestimated how easy it was to get behind and in reach of that. Alright, here we go. I know exactly what to do. I just have to do it. Okay, now um, I'm going to save right on Space Quest. All right. Now let's position ourselves perfectly. It's within reach. Reaching up, you give the rope a pulley a mighty shove. 
Oh, what a nice sound it made, too. And we don't even have to use our uh, ORAT um, thing. I'll show you where that would have been used. Get belt. That sounds like it'll be useful. Okay, look. Robot. The Terminator is now just a pile of junk on the first level platform. Oh, hey, Fester. Hey, what's going on here? Didn't you read the sign saying we're closed for repairs? Oh, I've seen you gotten rid of that grease-swilling android. Never did like that Terminator series. Good riddance to bad circuits. Well, you might as well ride down with me. All right. Thanks, Fester. I love his little waddle. All right, let's uh, let's read this sign. All right, we'll read top sign. Oh, for Pete's sake, read. Okay, or not, whatever. I'm not that interested. speed this up a little bit. Oh yeah, he exited. <laughs> okay, yeah, exit. Alright, yeah, whatever, bro. So you want to get safe and preserve yourself. Alright, so anyway, let me show you what we could have done, but, uh, you know, in the interest of time, uh, I won't actually do both. Let's see if I run into the place. If I don't, we'll just head on to the wild areas of space. Okay. Neat little rock formations. Okay. We got sand dunes. A venomous scorpusoid, we don't know. Okay, we got more rock formations. Okay, this is, look, this is looking promising. Here we go. Okay, so this is what um, what I would have had to do had I not known that I could get them that way. So these pods right here are uh, kind of like the pods from... Uh, um, what's that? Uh, Valve game Half-Life um, they suck you up with their tongues and uh, you can lure the, the cop there if you sort of hide behind here and uh, but then when they spit him out um, his remains are right below so you have to then use the ORAT on the stick to grab the belt so that's that's that and so I, if uh, I'm going to demonstrate how these guys work as you can see Thanks for playing Space Quest 3. As usual, you've been a real hoot. Pod chow. And as you can see, there's a pod with a smiley face. 
So that's um, that's how that works. But we have beaten the Terminator. We have won the day. And I believe that we are hungry. And we deserve a meal. Sit and computer. All right, so engines. Radar. Radar. No, radar. And now take off. All right, and we're in space. So let me say this. Let me get a Diet Coke, and I'll be right back in like two seconds. Oh, those barnacles. Okay. Yes. Space. The final frontier. Okay. Um, let's go to the navigation system. Love the music. Zoom scan. All right, let's set a course. And return. All right. And uh, let's go to light speed. Flashy message on your monitor attracts your attention. Approaching Monolith Burger. Well, look at that. Those guys in the Enterprise. They are uh, finished picking up their stuff and off onto the, their adventures. With the docking maneuver completed, the engine shut down. Welcome to Monolith Burger. You potch the hat, you pop the hatch, and ramble on in. All right. Oh well, I'm I sat down too fast. Let's talk to Jabba. Uh, talk to men, monster, the 
customers have better things to do than to talk to a small brain pi biped from a hick planet. These guys all have interesting little movement animations, like this guy right here. Yeah. Talk astronaut. Yeah, I know. It, it, it was it's sort of a hybrid enterprise. Oh man, these guys are so diverse. I love it. I love this guy right here. <laughs> He's my favorite. This guy right here is my absolute favorite. He's chilling out. He doesn't have any food. He looks absolutely weird as hell. He's, he might be a plant thing. And he's just chilling out and no one's bothering him. <laughs> it's great. Alright. Yeah, he's just being his little plant self. Alright. Alright. So, first off, um, oh, look at him. Okay, sure. Um, look at menu. I guess we might as well, uh, oh, cool. That's, that's cool, Wayun. Okay, so for, for a nod to Taco Bell, which I don't even think existed at this time, um, check this out. I'm going to get the Big Belcher combo. Oh, no, no. Trek tangents are very welcome here. Um, I'm going to choose a Big Belcher combo. And... Uh, I'll get a sloppy slurper. Oh, no, it includes a sloppy slurper. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we're good. What do you say? Well, I, I, I got a sloppy slurper. What else do you want? Oh, well, I got no other choice than to say yes. Okay, yes. Would you like some space buds with that? Uh, pushy counter clerk. Yes, sure. Would you like a black fruit pie with that? <laughs> sure. Special today, a free drink with every purchase. Total is nine buckazoids. Pay. Have a nice day. Take, okay, yep. All right, let's. Eat. Yeah, that's a bit, mm, that was my tasty, well, mildly tasty, maybe not tasty at all. In fact, it reminded you of the slick skin of a Vorlian mucus worm. Yeah, let's eat more. Not any food, drink. Okay, let's get up. Oh, okay. Well, now let's uh, let's let's chill out and let's get out of here, right? Watch this. supposed to uh, do something okay get in ship oh oh no oh no <laughs> man that big belter combo is a little too much for your delicate digestive tract you feel better now except of course being hungry again 
course, the thought of eating here doesn't appeal to you right at the moment. Yeah. That was one that took me a while. Because I always uh, got a different one. And this is the one I got. So... Yeah, look, menu. So, let's get instead the Monolith Fun Meal. Thank you. Thank you to quit. Like something to drink of that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, pay. All right. Have a nice day. Eat. this is my burger oh it must be my fun meal prize hey it's a swell Dakota ring all right well let's check that ring all right so basically yeah he eats a lot he could be in one of those competitions so um that decoder ring actually comes into play because the, the creators of uh, all these games at Scumsoft are actually being held hostage. Um, and they encoded a code with their games to let people know that they're being held hostage. And so that's what we're finding out by playing the arcade here at Monolith Burger. So now I basically have to um, play Astro Chicken and get them get the code. And of course I already know what it says. So, no translation needed. I can just tell you guys what it says. And we can pretend that uh, we took all the time to uh, translate it. Anyway. Exit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright. Space quest. boop -a doo Okay. Play. Play game. Astro Chicken. Astro Chicken is the curse of later space quests. Okay, Astro Chicken must land. Okay, uh, down, right, up, feed. Okay, got it. It's basically Moonlander. All right, insert Buckazoid. Oh boy, this costs money. Um. Do I need it? Okay. Play. Oh, definitely way in for sure. And thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Okay, pay. Uh, okay. Insert. Buckazoid. Oh, no. It, yay! No, 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 no. No! Oh. Yeah, Bacock. Oh, this is so hard to control. Oh my god, especially... 
especially on a normal computer. Ugh. Come on. Okay, hold on. Uh, insert. Buckas Wade. I get this. I can do this. No, I, I, I can do this. Come on. Okay. I might not even need to uh, do that, but uh, I certainly would like to get that. Oh, my Lord. Buck. Uh, Zoid, come on, Bacock, 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 Run, Bacock, No, Bacock. No! 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 Relax! Bukak! 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 Oh, phew! Okay. Now, um... If we look... Ring. Whew. No, um, if we use ring. There we go. Okay, so that is uh, how we kind of do that. So basically what it says, and it's signed, Two Guys in Trouble. And it basically says, Help us. We are being held, held uh, hostage by... Um, people, uh, and, you know, we're on a moon right off of Ortega called Pestulon, and, uh, that's where these pirates are, um, holding us, and please rescue us, and they have evil lime jello guns, so be careful. Um, two guys, signed, two guys in trouble. Something along those lines. Um, in any case, that is that. And here's another death. Uh, just um, before, uh, if uh, if you want to hang for the the death first, Wei Yun, um, we'll try to get this, guy, this guy's ship out of my airlock, geek. Well, he's gone now let's let's go back that's it for you bozo a pulse laser blast on the forehead is not your idea of fun fortunately it didn't hit anything important <laughs> all right wow we are 378 points out of 738 points. We are moving at a fine clip. And uh, let's make a new save just in honor of Monolith Burger, which is my favorite place and yours. And everyone's. Who doesn't like the idea of a fast food dive in space? Okay. Get in ship. All right. Slide back on the ship, closing the hatch behind you. The docking control beam begins guiding you safely clear of Monolith Burger. All right. Well, um, let's look computer. 
All right. Um, let's see. So, guess radar. Whoops. Yep. We'll definitely do that. Navigation system. Uh, oh, yeah. Full thrust necessary. Right. Okay. Thrust generation. And navigation system. All right. Ortega set course. All right, let's go to light speed. Oh yeah, this is definitely a taco sauce planet. If there ever was one. Flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. And we're orbiting planet Ortega. All right, well, let's, uh, I guess it's land, right? Land. Oh, this is a beautiful sound effect. With a mighty wump, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Ortega. Okay. Stand. So, um, I happen to know that if we do not arm ourselves correctly, we will melt on the surface of Ortega. So let's generate a new save. Ortega. And uh, let's put on underwear. I figure out which side is the front. You put on the thermoweave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. Ten whole points. Just for putting on some underwear. Alright. Press button. My, my, this is one hot planet. But you don't care? You're beating the heat with thermo-weave underwear. Oh, the, the ambient sound effects. I'm so glad that I, um, I set these on because it, it really makes a difference. And I didn't do this last time I played. Okay, so nothing much here, but gosh, it's so gorgeous. Now, Mono, you see what I'm saying when I say dithering? Like uh, all the, um, especially in the background, you see how the checkerboard sort of uh, color that they're using to sort of create the illusion of uh, texture and another shade. Definitely not stable. Uh oh, uh oh, oh boy. These guys don't look very friendly. Let's. Oh, and what's that? Look, look ship. Skull fighter. Okay. Look, men. Okay, so these are Scumsoft employees. Let's 
Looks like we want to wait until they are done doing whatever they're doing. So we are just chilling. That's good. Hear the roar of the pirate scout ship taking off. The ship streaks across the sky to an unknown destination. That's cool. All right. So let's see here. First off, let's take Rod. Take stick take get rod uh get pole all right now um i think these are thermal detonators get thermal detonators All right. Now, use surveyor. Okay, look. Okay, but uh, look telescope. Okay, use telescope. All right. Aha! You've discovered the force beam generator. And that moon must be Pestulon. All right. So, uh... Whatever is going on around here, I think that um, apparently what that's supposed to show us is that there's a beam being cast around the moon that makes it invisible or somehow otherwise hard for us to land there. So we're going to take care of that. Okay, let's see. You reach the rim of the decayed cinder cone and are overwhelmed by the sight. An impressive machine of staggering size sits in the middle of the volcanic crater. Let's, uh... Do a save right here. Okay. There we go. Okay. So they haven't quite figured out how to do scaling on sprites yet in Space Quest 3. But still, you get a real sense of scale here. is slippery I have definitely fallen off this before and it looks sort of fun to slide off of it but apparently it's not so all right let's just shimmy on up to the very edge 
Okay. Drop. Detonator. No. There. Okay. The explosion disables the force field generator. You may now travel safely to Pestilon. All right. Let's go. Uh, climb ladder. Uh, climb down. There we go. But now we gotta hurry. And my mouse is going nuts. Even though I'm not using it. Hold on a second. I will write my mouse after I am, I swear I'm not touching it at all. I want to get off this planet though. Oh yeah. My mouse is going crazy. It's it's drawn. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely time to get off. Let's get out of here. Okay. Yep, I know. Time to get off. Oh boy. Okay. My my, things have certainly changed since you were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the shimmering lava below. Um. Okay. Well, what we do is we vault across using that uh, pole. Use to vault vault use pole your brow furrows in grim determination as you prepare for a tremendous leap boink the Romanian judge gives you a 9.5 a truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season You'd like to try that again, but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below. All right. Let's get up here. All right, let's uh, sit. And let's computer and let's take up okay let's engines and let's take off and we're good Whew. all right it calls for a space quest save and uh, now we go on to pestulon So, let's see, what was it, radar? A navigation system. All right, so let's scan. And resume. Yep, set course. can go to we can cruise there we can do light speed it doesn't really matter it's already so close flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention 
All right, a orbiting pestilence. Let's land. With the mighty wump, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Pestulon. All right, here we go. Stand and press button. My goodness. Um, let's see, new save, and that's going to be Pestulon. See, Mono, we've, uh, this is actually, uh, we're going into this pretty fast. Ah, uh, you make your way through the forest of strange trees to this clearing where you discover the entrance to some large underground complex. This must be scum soft. Suddenly the door to the complex begins to open. Several guards file out the entrance and disperse to the woods. They must have been alerted to your presence when you landed. Two guards remain behind to watch the entrance. All right. Um, let's see. Well. Save. I'd say let's say hi to them. Um, decision time. Do you want to stay here, return to ship, and a scum stop? And a scum stop. Oh no, we're jello. That's a neat little effect, though. <laughs> that is cool how they, uh, how they replicated that little, uh, Jiggly wiggly. All right. Um, stay here. And what we do is we use the belt. Oh, wear belt. Use belt. Wow, this thing really works. You then quickly realize that you only have a few moments before the belt power pack is depleted. Enter scum soft. All right, let's get the heck in there. What's happening? Looks like you've made it just in time as your invisibility belt is now completely out of power. All right. Well, here we go. And uh, I guess we press button. Yeah. All right. We are definitely being super, super secret. No one would be able to tell that we're here. Wait, what's this? Yeah, stealthy like that cat in a box. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Bumped into myself there. Come on. There we go. 
What's this? You find yourself in, guess, a janitor's closet. You certainly have a sixth sense about this kind of thing. All right, well, search closet. Rummaging about the cramped closet, you find an old grimy janitorial coveralls. Okay, well, let's, uh, well, let's look at the coveralls first. Look. Coveralls. What do you mean? Get. Coveralls. What a great idea, Roger. No one would be suspicious of a janitor walking around. You grab the coveralls and pull them on, seizing the opportune moment to dump all of the old items you've been pocketing along the way. What a great disguise. Wait, what's this? You reach down to the pocket of the grimy coveralls and find, well, what do you know? Mr. Garbage, a trash vaporizer. You've seen these babies in all the janitorial supply catalogs. But your superiors were always too cheap to outfit you with one. We got a Mr. Garbage. Heck yeah. All right, so nothing more. Let's make our grand debut. Oh, we look at our digs. All right. So now that we have Mr. Garbage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I need to explain to you what this place is now. Um, I'm going to call this Nerdville. Basically, it is cubicle land. And uh, if you, um, they think you are a a uh, janitorial employee and um, so your job is to not blow your cover so in order to do that you have to look like a janitorial employee and janitorial employees do not miss vaporizing trash cans if you do miss vaporizing a trash can then they will know that you're not a janitor and then they will um, call somebody and get you caught. Um, and if you miss the uh, trash can too many times, same thing. So, yeah. And so we need to infiltrate. So that is... What we got to do. All right. So I'm going to put in vaporize. Well, no, I won't do that yet. Okay. Read note. Okay. Um. Vaporize. All right, there we go. Now we just basically need to uh, make our way through without being suspicious. So there we go. All right. Okay, there's a wall. All right. Okay. Let's 
vaporize for this guy. Alright. We're good. And this is supposed to be sort of a Microsoft type place because the boss is a guy named Elmo Pug. If you look in the very foreground, you'll see a picture of him that we need to actually find and duplicate. Let's see. Okay, so. All right. Oh, my. Perhaps we should have gone the other way. Um, what? No! What do you mean? That's so fair. Okay, so, um, vaporize, we really gotta be careful, oh, there we go, okay, so, let's not miss this guy's, vaporize, alright, good, vaporize. All right, take picture. All right, now we, we need a copy picture. All right. And now, replace picture. All right. No one will ever tell. So now that we've done that, um, that was pretty much the main point. Um, so I think we can go into the secret room now. Oh no, we also have to go to Elmo Pug's place. We gotta find out where his main office is. Believe it or not, it's not a corner office. Um, let's see. I think... Oh, wait. No, no, I'm not. Oh, you... Darn it. Okay, hold on. Inventory. Okay, good, I got a copy. So first thing I want to do is vaporize, okay, vaporize, okay. Vaporize. Okay, we're good. 
And we're doing, we're doing grand. All right. And they are, man, this is a pretty confusing place. Oh yeah, definitely huge Yuppie Psycho vibes. Um, where am I? Okay. It hits really close to home, you know? Especially if you work in a place similar to this. Okay, I'm thinking that I go through these two guys. So I gotta vaporize this. I gotta vaporize that. I've gotta keep on saving because I don't know when they're gonna get creeped out. Okay. Okay, there we go. Nope. Okay. Come on. All right. We are doing fine. Yes, okay, so now we're really close. Basically, I think if we go north one, we go to Elmo's place. Yep, there we go. Okay, so the people whipping people in the background, one of them's meant to be the project director, and I forgot who, uh, what his name was. Um, but the other guy's supposed to be Ken Williams, because that's basically what people think of him. He's kind of a slave driver. So, uh, Ken Williams is the guy on the left, and the project director is the guy on the right. Um, and yeah, so let's vaporize Elmo Pug's trash form, shall we? What an honor, sir. Jam and scram. He blows in response. All right. Well, um, let's see what's behind his office. I have a feeling that he's got 
don't know. I just get that feeling. Wait, look, Ken. No? Okay. Oh, look at, okay. Here's a typo, or not a typo, but here's an oversight. Um, okay, mono. Uh, if you, do you notice anything wrong with this picture? Um, I'm not sure if you do or not. Um, or if you are at your uh, computer at this very moment. But I will give you a couple seconds to respond. Um, because there's something glaringly wrong and and yet it is so minute. But when you know what it is, it's so obvious. And what it is, is that Roger Wilco is not in his coverall anymore. He is in his usual uniform. Somehow, even though he's looking at his ship, he is not disguised. So, that's just a neat little oversight. Look. You stand on a platform overlooking the Scumsoft Vehicle Bay. In the center of your hangar sits your ship, surrounded by rows of short-range skull fighters. Now how will you get out of here? All right. And we are... Oh! Nobody's in the office anymore. Hmm. All right. Take key card. All right. Let's get the hecky out of here. Yep. It's crazy. And we are pretty much at 500 points. Okay. Insert key card. You hear several clicks. I'm in, you think to yourself. Then you hear a synthesized voice say, Key card verified. Stand by for composite facial scan. Well, no problem because show picture. Dang it. Okay, insert key card. Show picture. Oh, am I offline? I, I did get a thing saying uh, saying that I had lost frames or something. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I'm uh, back. Okay. Anyway, these are the two guys from Andromeda right now. And they are not in a good way. Well, um... I hope that doesn't affect the stream too much. 
We'll see. All right, so um, two guys. Um, let's see. How do I? I guess there must be press button. There we go. Uh, look, guys. Health. They slurp from their jello encased captivity. Okay. Well, how can we help these guys? I'm thinking um, if we want to help uh, Mark Crow and, oh gosh, um, the other one's name always gets me and I, I never remember it. And I'm really sorry. Um, well, anyway, uh, the, I'm thinking that we need to vaporize the jello. So let's use, let's just vaporize. Yeah. You 737 of 738 points. Oh my gosh. You successfully free the two guys from their slimy confines and they begin to speak. Thanks, dude. It's great to be out of that green stuff. Hey, what's your name? Roger Wilco, you admit. They discovered our distress message we coded into the Astro Chicken game and sent us here as punishment. Let's get out of here before we're discovered. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, what you plan for getting us out of here, Wilco? Wait. Let me show you something. I, I love this fall. Woo! <laughs> One sm small step for man, one giant leap for Janitor Kind. I just love how his like leg sticks up in the air. Oh boy. Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> You must have thought you were pretty clever, Mr. Wilco, disguising yourself as a janitor. Oh, yeah, definitely more bar drinking. Unfortunately for you, my boys found your sorry excuse for a ship in the woods. Escort this gentleman to the arena. You boys haven't seen a good fight in quite a while. And do away with those two Andromedans. They have been more trouble than they're worth. Take them away. And now comes a really tough mini game. Oh, look, they took away my 200 points. That's nice. You and the two guys are separated and escorted away. A door opens and you are led into the dark unknown. Ah! Rock'em Sock'em Robots! Nukem Dukem Robots. The only rule is that there are no rules. You have a limited power supply. A successful blow will absorb my robot's energy and vice versa. On the other hand, a wasted movement of any kind will rapidly deplete your robot's power. 
Sounds like fun, eh? Nope, it does not. It is not fun at all. Anyway, here's the deal. If you win, <laughs> you have the honor of becoming Scumsoft's new full-time janitor. But if I win, you'll be dead. Oh, and by the way, your friends, the two guys from Drama, have joined us. As you can see below, be careful not to step on them. <laughs> Let the, let the game begin. Let the saves coming begin. Okay. Here we go. Oh, no. I'm going to save right here because he is flashing. Freaking nuke and dukem robots. I hate this shit. There we go. Come on, let's get out of here. Get them, you fools. Well, Roger, you done good. You managed to rescue the two guys and escape from Pestulon alive. Looks like this will be a milk run from here on out. Yeah, it's uh, not quite yet. But it's, uh, it's definitely easier. Gosh, Roger, we definitely appreciate you saving us and all. Yeah, we were really scared. We don't know what to, we wouldn't know what to do if Pug was going to. We didn't know what Pug was going to do with us. Hey, uh, don't you think we better get out of here? Pug's really sore. He's probably got some ships sent after us. Yes, he does. Computer. Warning, short range fighters approaching from rear. Weapons lock on detected. All right. Um, I think uh, let's press uh, six and then eight. Six and then eight. And then we do back and then front.
back. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right. These guys are the pirates. Even though they're employees, it doesn't really make sense why they're pirates. It just sounds good. All right. Remaining enemy, sh enemy ships have given up and are heading back to the planet. It looks like you were just too much for them. All right, so O and uh, I guess let's go to navigation system. No, non-functional. Okay, then F6. Man, oh man, you really showed those bozos a thing or two. Now we can get something to eat? You inform the two guys that light speed is no longer functional. They're not overly pleased by this piece of news. What? Now we'll never get any food. Some rescuer you are. Hey, what's this thing on the wall? It says, light speed maintenance access panel. Gee, maybe I can fix this bucket of plastic bolts. Yeah, this is it. This fan belt thing came off on the round thing it was on. Just a second. Okay, she's all fixed. Let's go grab a burger. Too late, you realize you have no course laid in. The late engines kick in before you can override. You inform the two guys that light speed is now functional, but it's out of control. They're not overly pleased with this bit of news either. Ah, we're gonna die! Oh no, why did I get up this morning? Mommy! Careening blindly through space, you shift speeds towards a sizable black hole. Once within gravitation of the black hole, there's no escape. You plunge into destiny. And then a, and a pretty meta ending as well. Overwhelming force of the black hole draws your ship in. Helps do anything you and your passengers strap in and hope for the best. You enter blackness like no other you have ever experienced. All sense of time and speed are lost. Suddenly, bright light becomes visible in the distance. It grows larger as your ship races towards it. Finally, you are hurled out of the blackness into a parallel universe. You cut the engines to sublight speeds near a seemingly habitable planet. And you go to Sierra's Oakhurst Station, their main base. In Oakhurst, California. This is what their place used to look like. Exactly. Back in the good old days. Greetings, Earthling. We are the two guys from Andromeda, universally famous software authors. 
And I'm Roger Wilco, space age swashbuckler and all around nice guy. I love how he just sort of sidles in at the back. Hello, I'm Ken Williams, president and founder of Sierra Online. So, you two guys are software authors, eh? What are your credits? Ever heard of Astro Chicken? No. Good. How about you guys coming to work for me? Sounds great. How much, how many buckzoids does it pay? Buckzoids? Say, uh, Mr. Williams, do you need a janitor? No. As our space saga comes to a close, Roger, feeling a little left out, struts off to his ship with the satisfaction of knowing his mission has been accomplished. The two guys from Andromeda go on to create the Space Quest series of adventure games, reaping fame and fortune. They grow fat on their excess and soon become burnt out and become a drunken tailspin into obscurity. And that is actually not too far from the truth. <laughs> unfortunately. And so we bid our hero a fond farewell as the ship once again bursts into light speed. Course unknown. The end. And of course we wish the two guys a very good luck on their next uh, project which will come out at some point. And uh, yeah, this is it's meta. And they're piggies because they're piggies. That's their design. And yes, I missed 10 points. But what a game. And uh, I'm so glad I got the sound to work. I'm, I'm ex 